Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are today. My name is Alan Young, and I'm with Hospitality Net, and we're in the middle of uh, producing a whole bunch of sessions for High Tech TV, which will be the online solution uh, for people that may or may not be attending High Tech this year. Uh, we're working in partnership with HFTP to produce these, and I am super excited about having three industry experts on the panel today to talk about property management systems innovation and the future of property management systems. Uh, I started off in hotels, but my first tech gig was they, with a company called Micros Fidelio back in the days. And I think if I was to dig through some of the books in my office, I'd find the data dictionary for Fidelio 6.4 somewhere. Um, but I, it's been a part of my life for a great deal. And, and property management systems has always been a, a huge interest of, for, my, for myself. Um, I'd like to introduce Jason Hughes from Visual Matrix, Michael Schubach from Infor, and Finis Basha from Agilisys. We've got these great folks. Uh, Jason is a CTO. Michael is in charge of product. Uh, Finnis is in charge of product as well. We got some product people that are really have to spend their days and times focusing on the future and what they need to bring to the market while also listening to hoteliers. So Jason, I'd like to start off with you if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and giving us a little bit of background on Visual Matrix. Sure. So yeah, my name is Jason Hughes and Visual Matrix is um, a small but mighty company. We're based in Richardson, Texas. We've got uh, most of our employees here, obviously working remote. We've got a few in some other parts of the country. Um, we're about 20 years old for the first 19 years of that. We were bootstrapped, founder-led, really took most of our direction from hoteliers. Um, within the past year, we've gone through uh, an acquisition through Alpine Software Group, which we've got some sister companies like Profit Sword, Transcendent, and Alice now coming onto the pipeline. Um, my background, I've worked in hotels for about eight years, started in Las Vegas, working on the Strip, um, and then I got into software later. Um, I've been with Visual Matrix for 11 years now, done everything here from support, uh, product management, project management, development, a lot of programming. Um, and now in my current role as a CTO. So um, glad to be here. Glad to meet these guys. And hopefully I'll see you guys all on the floor in high tech. There you go. Thanks so, very much. Thanks so much, Jason. Michael, over to you. Hi, I'm Michael Schubach. Um, I'm with Infor Hospitality. Um, a, a word about the company um, is Infor Hospitality or Infor, which is our our larger organization is a multinational, multi-billion dollar uh, software um, conglomerate. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries. Um, and we do business uh, in hospitality in over 70 countries and worldwide within for, uh, it's probably closer to 150 locations, uh, countries worldwide. Uh, hospitality wise for me, um, I'm a uh, CHTP and a CHAE emeritus. I'm a member of the HFTP International Hall of Fame, and um, I've been at this a little longer than Jason. I'm a, I'm I'm headed into about my 40th year of this, um, and uh, have seen the evolution of uh, hospitality systems. and And frankly, my entire career has been either in providing hospitality products for consumers or Jumping across the fence, I've been a consumer. I've had, I lead purchasing efforts and IT efforts within um, major hotel organizations and, and have been a consultant as well. Awesome to have you today, Michael. Thanks so much. And not Fidas, enough. last but not least. Thank you. Thank you for the introductions, Alan. Yes, my name is uh, Firas Pasha. I'm here with uh, Agilisys. We are also a multinational company with our uh, core emphasis on hospitality. That's all we do. We offer three world-class property management systems alongside a suite of hospitality solutions, both in the cloud and on-premise, um, focusing on delivering on each aspect of the guest experience, from property management systems to food and beverage, spa, golf, and every other touch point um, during the guest journey. We, we focus on providing a cohesive guest experience presence in over 78 countries at this point with 14 global offices, so it's a pretty multinational company. My background, um, about 14 years now in hospitality, started my career a little bit young in Europe, um, doing some chain rollouts in EMEA um, and APAC, 
um, just on the boots, boots on the ground, uh, deploying hospitality systems, and that taught me a lot about um, how that works <laughs> across the world, and how to and, and how crucial the technology that we're about to talk about today is to hotel operations, both in terms of their efficiencies and how they manage their operations, but also in how it impacts the guest experience. So that's what excites me. Um, I'm excited to talk to all of you today. Excited to meet everybody, and uh, looking awesome. forward to it. Great. So we've we've been in unprecedented times, and I don't know how many times we can say that. But one of the things that uh, we've been asking a lot of the panelists over these sessions is, how have they spent the last twenty four months? Um, you know, there are certain areas of our business that have been incredibly busy, uh, contactless providers, things like that, that appear to have been slammed almost as soon as the pandemic started. Uh, but there are others that have been kind of in the middle or, or had more time on their hands to deal with, uh, you know, rejigging of software or maybe even looking at repositioning. So, uh, Jason, let's start with you. What, what has Visual Matrix been doing over the past 24 months to ensure that you have the right product at the right time as we come out of COVID-19? Definitely the past few months have been focused on integrations. Uh, we brought on new payment processors. Um, we've got a lot of you know channel management um, integrations that we're working on. But over the past 24, I'd say the majority of that time was really spent trying to help our owners control costs and um, we, we rolled out some new revenue management features, new um, housekeeping, made tracking features in our mobile app, things like that. And those were really just on demand what the, you know, what our customers were asking for. Um, it was a little bit easier to use that focus group, I think, probably than just, you know, going blindly and, and looking for things to fix. And Fidas, how about yourself? So on both tracks, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, what we looked at is how do we manage or help our customers manage through this process? So at the very beginning, really the focus was on the changing nature of operations, particularly with the focus things on things like cleanliness and housekeeping, it's similar to Jason. How do we allow people um, to automate the process of distancing you know, guests between rooms, for example, and leaving the extended clean period? What changes need to be made in how you manage housekeeping? That was initially during the pandemic and is now carried over into feature sets that, that can be used during the new normal that's emerging. Um, at the same time, we talked to our customers to figure out what do we need on the post end of recovery, right? So on the post end of recovery, we've done a couple of things. One, we've accelerated our investment. Um, in terms of R&D, we didn't, we didn't slow down on R&D. We accelerated our investment in R&D to accomplish two things. One is we introduced a bevy of new products um, focused on the contactless guest experience and what, would be, what are the needs of the new normal in terms of the expectations of the guest. And, from service options to cleanliness, and how does that relate to mobility? Um, but also, how do we reduce the costs for our hotel operators in terms of efficiency? The contact list has two sides. How do I do more with less, especially in an environment today where it's very difficult to hire, train, and retain talented staff? How can I accomplish more with less while delivering those powerful guest experiences that you're used to? And on the third track, we uh, did do significant investment in retiring any tech debt. So all of our, we have a rich history of solutions, very feature rich solutions. So we use this time also to completely modernize all our user experiences um, and the technology stack behind them. And that initiative is now being completed. So all three of our property management systems, for example, have been completely uh, modernized um, alongside our portfolio of other rich hospitality solutions, which you're, we invite people to you know, come and enjoy. Right. So, so you, so you know, I think that's really important. You're making sure the fact that you have products available for the way people want to use them, uh, organically and and process oriented ways, is is so important. Uh, Michael, over to you. What what's Infor been up to during this uh, strange think, strange period? Yeah, strange is correct. I think we've all had very similar experiences, and I think that um, in this regard specifically, um, that the pandemic, which of of the multiple verticals that exist within Infor, we were we were certainly the hardest hit. Um, hospitality, I think that's a truism of hospitality worldwide, um, and and so it was it was uniquely impactful for us. Um, but the interesting part, I think, is is that we all immediately begin to talk about the contactless um, um, applications and the mobility aspect of it. And I look at 
at the pandemic as not having been the root cause, but an accelerator of a trend that was that we all expected with millennials. Um, and it and it sort of happened and sort of not happened. And then it, then suddenly the whole idea that we had to be mobile, we had to be we had to be contactless, was was just simply moved from the optional category to the mandatory category. Is we it just be, it went from being um, a, a nice a nice box to tick for those who are interested into this is how we will do business in the future. So it changed the 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 focus of what we do and it changed the way that customers were willing to expect, customers of the hotel, the guests were willing to accept services and what and what and to reassure them so that they could travel with some degree of of, of certainty that that they would be well taken care of. So all the things we've talked about, the sanitary requirements, the extra time to turn rooms, the extra spacing, all of all of the paradigms of where we would have maybe liked to have packed them in like sardines had to be sort of electronically re-engineered to keep them apart and keep them somewhat distant. And and as we recover and and I always like to say, you know, from from starting from this point forward, every guest who comes into a hotel is in fact a COVID pandemic survivor and their experiences, their life experiences have been radically changed by, by this worldwide phenomenon. Um, and so we have a whole new level of expectation being um, um, levied at the hotels as to what constitutes good, conscionable, responsible service and and we're there to help them to provide that in any way they see necessary that's a great that's a great way to look at things you know it, it's definitely is different uh it doesn't matter where you are whether you're in a grocery store at a gas station or you know in a restaurant exactly. uh, people's uh have a tendency right now that they're uh everything some people just seem on edge and and sometimes that can you know parlay itself detrimentally into a service-based in industry uh, hotels being one airlines being another and restaurants being the third so makes a complete sense you you kind of talked about mobile michael and i think that's kind of where we need to lead to next i was reading an article a few days ago that said what was it 85 or 86 percent of all people now survey of people between the ages of 16 and 24 no longer see a need to utilize a phone for calling period um so that's a pretty big number the only reason they probably get called is if they need to get picked up or if or they answer a call if their parents are grumpy uh, so with mobile, though, it really is a consumer-generated issue, but mobility also has a factor now in in the back of house. Um, you know, how are how are people utilizing mobile on both sides of the equation? So, Michael, let's let's start off with you. We'll go back around. <clears throat> well, and and not to monopolize the conversation too, but that we do see that that uh, one of the big the the big changes has been there is for a long time departments that that seemed to be not worthy of being mobilized, quote unquote, um, or service dispatched were those um, those areas where there was there were a lot of employees and the cost of the devices of, of mobilization would, uh, on a per capita basis was extremely high. That's no longer true. And so what, what we have to do in all of this is emphasize service and service optimization and the idea that that we as an industry are going to have to respond as efficiently and as effectively as we can to requests. So the idea that the entire staff would be mobile, that we can, and that's the expectation that having a phone in your pocket for the last 25 years has put on everyone is I expect you to answer now. I expect my question to be resolved now. I expect my service delivery to be to the door in five minutes or you're giving it to me free. Um, it's it's that, that heightened expectation, that curve of expectations that now has been emphasized both by a younger generation of consumer and also by a worldwide pandemic is this is important. You need to hear me. You need to hear me now. You need to respond. And so we have to pass that on in every application that we provide is the ability to reach out, explain what is there, prearrange as much as possible, 
use dispatching and service optimization to reach the right person at the right time because there are so many fewer recipients of those messages now in a post-pandemic and world world that we that we have to organize the staff to do business differently. Um, I think the you know the point was made earlier that that it's asking more of fewer of fewer bodies and fewer hands. Mm -hmm. And and the only way we can do that is to make the process more efficient from beginning to end. Agreed. Jason, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think on the mobile front, um, it's kind of interesting. You know, we've gone through the same life cycle with having to roll out guest interaction, you know, texting and things like that for special requests and um, also mobile key for doors, you know, um, giving maintenance people the ability to do work orders with a mobile app or housekeepers to mark a room clean or inspected. And and then you hear back from the hotel owners that they don't want their employees to be on a phone in public, you know. So, hey, we also need it on a tablet or we need it on this other device. And it's things you don't think of when you're a, a programmer, you know. You <laughs> just think, I have a phone in my pocket, so everybody wants to whip out their phone. And so it, it opens up a whole new door. You know, they might want an Alexa device or some other Internet of Things. Um, and it's it becomes, a you know, a rabbit trail. And, and I think right now the whole industry is kind of following that that rabbit trail to see what, what the right balance of, of new technology is versus um, what becomes a barrier for the, the hotels to actually be hospitable. And, um, and I think the most exciting thing for me is the level of automation it allows because we can do things now like schedule pre-check-ins and, and send out keys to people and we find out exactly when they're arriving because they've clicked on a button that says, hey, I'm here and we can make sure that everything that they need is ready um you know right when they arrive at the hotel we can give them you know instructions if it's a complicated property things like that and automation on the guest interaction front we're seeing a lot of that with with our own technology and with people we integrate with um you know where you, you know you can respond in english but they can get it in hindi or whatever um to the guest and, and that, that kind of service just didn't exist you know, in the years past. So that's the part I'm excited about. Right. Firas, how about you? What What does Agilis been up to from a mobility standpoint? Um, it's definitely an exciting thing. Again, I think also this is an acceleration of a trend that we were more moving towards, and this is just you know, further that goal. You know, PMS has always served as the core technology drivers for hotel operations teams, but it's been limited by the constraints of the traditional front desk and the technology assumptions behind that. But hotel teams, we all recognize they're, they're by and large mobile teams. So uh, a system that requires a user to be stationary was an, was an antithesis to that. So as we grow, I, I would agree wholeheartedly with my, with my colleagues uh, on this call. We're striving to deliver experiences that can be more responsive to the guests. And to be more responsive to the guests, we have to look at the end-to-end -end experiences and all the systems that are connected along the way. So if we look back uh, to you know, how do we respond to the guests in the time frame that you know, Michael was ex expressing, we have to look at the origination point with who we're talking to and make sure that the systems are communicating to each other in a cohesive fashion so the guest that requests something from their room makes it down to every touch point that needs to be actioned by that staff. And traditionally integrations, in its um, folks on integration here for this for a second, has been in a silo where each system is looking at its own. I think what we're seeing now is collaboration with all of our partners and internally when we develop our own modules to look at every touch point, how can we bring those closer together to close that communication loop in a much tighter fashion than has traditionally been possible. Um, including to connect that with guest devices. And mobile doesn't necessarily mean a mobile application. When we engage employees, uh, definitely some will, will require dedicated um, devices provided by the company, but also how do we automate and engage with communication to devices that can be, um, to personal devices such as providing uh, communication via text message or email message to any uh, staff member on the property without providing the need for uh, dedicated mobile. Yeah. Um, applications. Yeah. And you talked about uh, the, the integrations and collaboration, et cetera. And that's property management systems companies have, have always been, well, not always, but at times been seen as uh, immovable. This is you've got to do it our way or, or the, you know, the highway. Uh, that world's changing dramatically. 
um, people are looking at our industry as, as being something that needs to work together in order to supply exactly what that guest is looking for when and where they want it. So with that in mind, have, have you, uh, Jason, I'm going to ask you first, have you structured an environment where Visual Matrix is sitting there and they're, you're ready to play with anybody and you've got open APIs and you have all these wonderful things that, that enable uh, you to be seen as, as the ultimate nice guy to play with? That's definitely the goal. Um, I, I'm on the, um, the work group, I think it is, for HTNG's Express PMS. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a passion project of mine. Um, so that's definitely the goal is to have more open APIs. I think where it plays out for us on the PMS level is when we say want to add a new feature um, like internet charges or electronic locks, anything like that. In the past, it's, it's always been, we've had to write an integration for each partner individually um, to their spec. And now we can, we can point to an open API, write one, um, you know, implementation of that. And then a lot of those partners can consume that. And so rather than necessarily exposing everything all at once to an open API, we've been selective, slicing in what we need and focusing on that. But that 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 speeds up the development process for us because we can write the one implementation unless for some reason, you know, we have to write something super specific. And I think that's the direction that we're going right now. Right. Michael, how about you? Because Infor has got a, a lot of tentacles out there. <laughs> um, well, uh, yes, and we, but but we take the same approach, which is we maintain a, a a fairly extensive API library with the intention that somewhere out there is something that works for you if you're a co-provider, um, and and if not. And as Jason said, then we then we would rather we build one to suit you because almost invariably we're going to use it again when someone else has a similar request. So those things, I think that's that's just the efficiency of the communications method. The real question is 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 what are we doing here? Um, it begins to look like a giant pop bead um, formation of of services, goods and services linked together. And I think if you look at it, if you look at things like express check-in and pre-check-in, pre-arrival check-in, and, and other items that have been mentioned already, um, key preparation, etc. What that really says to us is that we're trying to lengthen the horizon of guest interaction is that we want to start earlier and go later um, and we and and in my perfect world um, a standard hotel check-in would look more like a standard airline check-in that I would tell you 24 hours in advance uh, yes I am coming and and because I can see your flight information if I have a single guest itinerary and I can know transportation conditions between the airport and the hotel and I can know average line line times at the airport. I can tell you what time you're going to be at the front desk and I can tell you what time your room is going to be ready and I can make those two things coincide. Um, and I can do those kinds of things all the way through that journey. So so the 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 two two things that I see is number one is extend the horizon and number two react to every event on that horizon make a make an event horizon that that turns out to be a unique guest experience also a great movie <laughs> yes that's why I stole that there you go Fidas how about how about yourself and, and the world of APIs and and, and just to, just to say I've been to Vegas a number of times I am the worst player tracking consumer <laughs> known to man I think if if I win something I leave um, it's important so, for you to know that means you're going to get the worst room too that's right. in Vegas so yeah, just know that's that that's right so yeah. so so how about yourself Fidas Right, absolutely. APIs uh, in and of themselves are not a new concept, and the importance of having a, a rich library of interconnectivity options with our partners to drive those guest experiences also not necessarily a new option. But I think what has changed, or is definitely in the process of changing, is their accessibility. Right, so making it easier to integrate and consume those APIs, and providing a myriad of different connectivity options, and more importantly. Uh, interactions, what interactions can they power within the context of the guest journey um, that Michael was referring to. That thought process and making those more accessible and that dialogue with partners is, I think, something that is evolving and that we're seeing more of, especially during the course of the pandemic when we've been working with our partners um, and with our 
with our uh, customers. It's not challenging to put out a library of APIs. What's more important is think about the experience that you want to drive to your guest, like the arrival at the airport so you can coincide um, with the check-in time. That's a, that's a great example. And there's absolutely um, other examples where traditionally let's, let's use some of our customers if we think within a silo, when we talk about understanding our guests, the traditional integration model, the PMS has served the role of providing information for someone else in terms of the vendor ecosystem to understand your guests. If you look a little deeper, as about how can you take that a step further from the guest journey experience? How do I then take what a CRM might understand about again a, a guest and then bring that back to operations, which is not a traditional connectivity method, so that they can action it at additional touch points that are not traditionally there with integrations that we've thought about them in the past, very transactional in the past. Now it's more about that guest journey and thinking about it in that manner. And that's something that I'm excited to see so we can power those innovations um, right. for our guests. So I, one of the things that Back in the days when I used to sell and market property management systems, they were the beating heart of the hotel. Um, you know, that was also the days when you could charge exorbitant amounts of money for a property management system, which is not the case anymore today. Is it still true that the property management system is that beating heart that without the property management system, nobody could survive within the hotel industry? Jason? Let's say for the individual hotel, for sure. For the large ownership groups, it's probably more CRM um, related. But yeah, I, I, I don't see the, the PMS going away anytime soon. And if you replace it with something that can do check-ins and check-outs, I mean, you're just you're moving the shell to a different thing and that, that becomes the PMS. Do you see the PMS becoming more and more vital as it offers different things or connects to more things? Or do you think it's the heyday of, of 30 years ago where everything resided in the PMS is, is, is even around anymore? There's, I mean, it's going to depend on the hotel. You know, if you're a hundred room hotel off the side of the highway, your PMS is everything. If you're a large resort, um, it, it's, it's still a vital component, but it's not everything. So I, I think it's going to depend on on the individual hotel, um, you know, to answer that. But you know, it's the core thing that you have to have, right? You have to be able right. to to start that guest experience and check the person into the room. So, so Michael, how about yourself? Having been in the industry for just a few years, um, what's your take on on the uh, the importance of the property management system? Well. Um, it's just a few decades, actually, but not, <laughs> neither here nor there. Uh, the, the, I think that, that the idea is if we use the analog of the information superhighway, the, the question was, was, were we the terminal point? And there was a time when, yeah, I mean, there, there, that, that superhighway was more of a dirt road. And <laughs> yeah, we were the final destination. Now there are, there's just far more traffic in there. So we, we are definitely a part of a greater whole, but I think you should look at us more like the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport of, of that information superhighway. We may be, a, we may be an exchange point and, and a crossroads um, and, and we have to deal with that, but we have to understand that we are not necessarily the ultimate destination of all that information, that we must respond to remote CRM, remote databases, um, remote capabilities, information, guest service um, uh, information, as we've taught up, preferences, um, allergies, uh, and any kind of information that we have about the guests, those are gonna come from multiple sources and we have to be able to mediate and traffic cop it and and facilitate transfer from one system to another um, and i think we should look at ourselves as participants but very important participants and to jason's point in some cases when that participant is is a, a small player we we might be the vast majority of of their information hub but but always and forever with the internet of things it's just extending further out it's that it's the extension of of the of the event horizon essentially same right. thing same thing for us how about yourself your world's a little bit different at times in vegas because you know it's <laughs> super duper important um but uh but you know it, do you do you see it as being market segment oriented do you see it as being a little bit different 
I think the, the role of the PMS, I, and I agree with my colleagues, has evolved over time. The PMS was a jack of all trades, um, and now we're, this evolution of the technology landscape is allowing us to drill down on core competency, which is the hotel operations and powering the hotel operations on a day-to-day -day basis in, in many ways. And I also agree that the, the role, the integral role and nature of the PMS is going to uh, scale up or down based on the complexity of a hotel's operations. Uh, 100 percent but the the pms itself is uh i see continuing to be as a, a core hub or a core piece of that ecosystem that facilitates the guest journey now as as the solutions have fragmented or have, as the players in the landscape have fragmented what i think we're losing a little bit in the pms that you had with the time when we had those uh, larger um, single footprint solutions is that connectivity of data and bringing in that understanding of the guest at every touch point. So what's really important as the evolution plays out is to recognize that the PMS is still integral to hotel operations for many aspects of the department, many of the departments in a hotel operations team. And then as those um, that landscape evolves, we have to make sure that we facilitate the communication between systems and provide that same level of depth of interactions, understanding about the guest within the PMS so that it can be actioned by your core operational teams from housekeeping to front desk um, and depending again on the property, all the other departments that may be using um, the property management system itself. Right. Makes sense. Do, I think uh, Michael mentioned that earlier, like the single guest itinerary, for example, providing that single view of the guest, no matter if they're using all the Gillis's solutions, which we provide, or working with partners, bringing that single view of the guest's journey to the operations team so they can advise the guest accordingly and personalize their experiences. Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. It, from I wish I wish it was always the center of the universe. There's no doubt about it because I have a soft spot in my heart. But I think it is it is changing. The landscape is changing. Um, as the landscape changes, people be people are different. Um, their their importance level is is fragmented. Uh, what they deem as important versus non important changes. I, I think, however, there is one thing that everybody believes is important, and that's security. Um, especially in this day and age, uh, the more and more we see uh, independent hacks of hotel systems, hacks of banking platforms, et cetera, et cetera, uh, because it does become primary uh, a primary news source, uh, it's amplified everywhere. Property management systems, along with other secondary and tertiary systems, are utilizing data in a, in a very different fashion. Uh, there's nothing that will stop a hack if it really is going to occur. Those things may happen. But what type of things are you doing to ensure the fact that the guest data is is being kept as safe as humanly possible? Michael? Well, uh, you're exactly right. Security is the um, is the end all be all um, a, of both information and 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 sort of the integrity of the business. And 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 we are up against a worldwide um, foe on the subject of, of compromise is that that there are a million players out there and, and all they have to do is get it right once. And although, and I think we also have to remember that security is not just simply what, what are we doing within our application, but how is it being handled? What are users doing? How is the world responding? What are, what are people looking at? It's not singularly our problem, it's singularly the world's problem. And, and so we do all the things that you might expect. We've removed all of the financial impact as much as humanly possible through tokenization, point-to-point -point encryption, removal of actual hard records within that used to be resident in plain, clear view inside of property systems without, without, without the slightest regard for, for data security. Um, and now we have to be just as careful with uh, personal identifiable information mm -hmm. and and in some cases and if you're using spa information that includes um, uh, contraindications for mm -hmm. certain services now suddenly we're out there with with what could be construed as personal medical information um, is is there is a lot to be wary about and so obviously we go to extreme lengths to be incredibly compliant with with multinational privacy requirements uh, the requirement to drop identifiable information upon request these are all sort of semi semi newish kinds of things that are out there that say that we we must be we must realize that when you're in 
the world of every device and every, every speaks to every other device out there is is that that opens you to a lot of of potentially risky behaviors and and exposes you to some unnice people and so um, you know, it, it, it's the new normal is just like a pandemic of, of virus, viruses, literally, we, we, we have to guard against viruses, bad actors, and, and, and it's a, it's a 24, seven, 365 heightened alert always for all of us, I think. Right. And, and Jason, do you, do you see this the same way? Do you actually have a group or, or is that just embedded within your entire development structure and, and product strategy? Yeah, I mean, we've got outside um, like third party auditors and things like that that'll vet us, but most of it's in my department. Um, you know, we kind of, we have a hybrid problem, right? We've got uh, an on-prem version of our software that's in 32 countries and we've got a cloud version of the software. So they have different, um, you know, different risk levels there. I think a lot of it comes down to vetting your partners. So whether it's Azure, uh, AWS, you know, wherever you're hosted, if you're hosting in your own data centers, it's, it's, uh, you know, about your, your practices and protocols. What are you opening up? You know, a lot of the big hacks that we've seen, it's been because some business developers put things in an elastic database somewhere and maybe left that open. It's not, it's not usually like an individual hotel's data that's getting out. It's, it's something, you know, beyond beyond the scope of the PMS. But for us, um, primarily, it's just good practices. If if our cyber insurance tells us we need eight character passwords and rotate them every, you know, 90 days, let's do 13 character passwords and rotate them every 30 days or, you know, turn on multi-factor, you know, whatever, whatever you have to do, but go beyond mm -hmm. the bare minimum there. And, you know, just try to be transparent. I think that's, that's the biggest change for us as a company is um, be, be transparent with release notes, be transparent. If something were to come up, nothing has, but if something were to come up, have a plan, have a disaster recovery plan that you can execute on and have partners that you can trust. Right. Makes sense. Fit us. How about yourself? Yeah, I think cybersecurity and then echo is a top, top, uh, forefront of all of our minds. And that, that recognition of the importance of cybersecurity has to be ingrained culturally at all aspects of the organization. So we think about just from the beginning stages when you're coding and designing uh, solutions, new solutions, or expanding on existing feature sets, ingraining design reviews, code analysis, third-party dependency analysis, just into that development process from the get-go is crucial, um, including things like penetration testings once you're done with, with the features. Technology has certainly helped along the way. Tokenization and point-to-point -point encryption means we're never storing um, personal credit card data at any point throughout the life cycle of the guest through our ecosystems, um, and also an enhancements in integration so that we're sure we're filtering out any personal information depending on the party that we're talking to and how that endpoint is secured. Also a crucial component when we're talking about designing feature sets. Right. On the data privacy side, um, Regulations emerge, they're growing, they're evolving. It started with GDPR, it moved into CCPA in California. The expectations of a guest in terms of their data retention uh, may change within one hotel. One, one guest arriving from the European Union may have a different expectation than a California resident. So making sure that you get the consent of the guest to retain their data for the time that you need it, and then automating the uh, removal of any sensitive data after that point of period has elapsed. Um, it's something that's just ingrained um, into the feature set so that we can adapt to changing regulatory environments and expectations of our guests as well. At an organizational level, it goes beyond code, though. You have to make sure it's not just about accessing the PMS. Um, it's also about accessing your internal organizational systems and so securing your, your customers' um, information beyond the hotel property management system itself, which is why we have a dedicated information security team, the vice president of information security, keeps us all on our toes and not just tests us as engineering teams or product team members, but every single team member in the organization is subject to phishing tests, blank, blanket phishing tests, security awareness training uh, on a regular basis, and all our systems are secured. Um, with web application firewalls and testing of all aspects of our the, the tools that we use to build the solutions that we deliver to our customers as well. Right. Um, and certainly with external auditing, we're fully SOC 2 compliant. We work with external auditors to get our SOC 2 compliancy, PCI DSS compliancy, um, and external auditors to also do penetration testing against our own systems so that we're not operating within a silo. Right. So, so I want to go back to something that uh, I believe it was Michael that you brought up related to 
the speed of which people want to be responded to, um, whether it's for a request or anything along those lines, as we are, are as we are post pandemic living in a much more uh, need to have environment uh, versus want to have. And hotel technology providers, it doesn't matter what type, we are all in this service game. Uh, you know, yes, we develop technologies and we deliver them, but the mo one of the most important things we do is service them to make sure that we're there to support uh, the hoteliers as they are there to support their guests. With this need to ramp up, this, with a ramped up sense of urgency, have you done, Michael, anything within Infor to ensure the fact that you guys are there, obviously 24-7, but are there faster, quicker to address the needs of the hotelier because their needs might be a little bit more frantic than they were previously? And I was muting out to be a, a good neighbor and started to deliver into the ozone. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> truthfully, yes, we look at this as the as you know we we pay a great deal of attention to what is the ongoing relationship between ourselves and the hotel, and truthfully, the biggest touch point over time is the support organization. And so, not a, you know not to be there just when things are good, but then how do we respond when there is a a need to to um, get back to customers quickly, um, put them right what is wrong, whether, regardless of how it started or, or what, what the root cause might show, and, and get them on the air and doing, do what we do. Um, it's, it's a, it's a 24 hour environment. And I think those of us who grew up in hospitality environments know that, you know, yes, it's not, it, it, it's, it's not hospitalization. We are not brain surgeons, but there is a high need to respond quickly in our environment and we have to do it around the clock. One of the things that we did specifically that has just taken off like gangbusters is, um, we're re-engineering the paradigm of the support response of, of with online chat, where we can literally look at the screens that they're looking at and respond in real time with procedural assistance and, and a specific rather than when can you get back to me and what can you show me is the, the response to live chat to com immediate interaction has been tremendously high. And, and it is, it's, it's it's not brand new technology, but but implementing it on a global basis and being able to respond to, as we've said before, too, there's these spoken language requirements in order to respond to people who work in in multiple environments in multiple countries. And I've always you can be surprised by what the language requirements are both here in the United States to respond to users and also abroad that that it isn't necessarily the national language that you have to be ready to deal with it it can be any number of languages right. and 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 the ability to do that online real time is a big focus and and is reaping big rewards as far as we're concerned right Jason how about how about yourself in visual matrix I haven't noticed necessarily a huge push from our our owners saying, "Hey, we need to speed up um, guest interaction." I think they were just happy to get it. So, <laughs> if, if if you can have a, a guest a guest text you that they need towels, you know, um, nobody was like, "Make this faster." Um, but that was a, a big you know improvement. I think for a lot of our owners, it's a, it's about um, making sure that the right people are getting dispatched. So having an on-call list or having um, some sort of way that, hey, if, if it hasn't been responded to in a couple of minutes, hey, more people are being brought into the circle and, and can attend to their guests. Um, and so that, that's been the biggest push for us is just getting features like that out and controlling the costs. Um, you know, any time you roll out a new feature like that, if it blows up, you know, another 4 or $5 per for reservation or something to the hotel owner, um, that's, a, that's a downside. So when we can roll our own features out like that um, at, you know, for free or at cost, whatever it is, um, that's been the biggest push. I haven't necessarily had any feedback saying, hey, we need to make this quicker. Right. Fidas, how about yourself and Agilisys? 
Yeah, it's two angles there. So on the guest interaction side, naturally, the, the focus on the solutions that we've been delivering over the course of the past year, two fronts, um, automation. So automate some of the things, you know, some of the things that Jason was talking about, automating a delivery of notifications to the right people to do the right things at the right time when the guests request them is something that's integral to our ecosystem and with our partners. And that serves a key aspect of being able to respond quickly on the guest demand side of things. And also naturally on the guest demand side of things, the self-service options that we've expanded over time. You can order things that we think about, even Las Vegas, you've seen on the news, guests ordering on their phone, room service on their phone, or doing housekeeping requests on their phone, or performing traditional requests that would require uh, in a normal uh, pre-technology landscape, a manual touch points between individuals throughout operational teams is now all automated so that it flows from the guest directly to who needs to action it at any point in time without uh, any manual intervention required that slows down that process. So those technologies have already been delivered and we continue to identify ways to improve on those so we can accelerate that responsiveness to guest requests. On the team side, I just want to add, uh, I mentioned, Michael mentioned, what we're seeing I think a little bit more of is uh, higher turnover, hospitality is known for high turnover, but we're seeing even higher turnover now after the, the pandemic. And so we're seeing people enter the industry, enter our hotels that are not as familiar with hotel backgrounds. And we're also seeing now the evolution of roles at the hotel with one team member who was previously doing at the front desk now doing multiple roles and having to learn new aspects of the system with very minimal uh, team members on hand to help train them because they've either left or not familiar with the functionalities that they need across the systems that they need. So we're, our support team and our customer success team is positioned to respond to them uh, quickly. So as, we, as they contact us, uh, we have to make sure we have a support organization that's ready to respond to them and, and guide them along the right path. And also, as we learn more about how this changing roles place demands on the property management system or what our customers' priority are, priorities are, um, we have significant investment in R&D, which allows us to isolate a team just to respond to customer requests, be that a, a resolution of a potential issue, but also new feature sets. We isolate a team that's just responding to customer requests in addition to any other parallel strategic priorities that might be in process. Right. Well, awesome. We're coming up to almost the close of the session. So what I would like to do is to go around to each one of you and, and ask for some closing remarks. This is your, your shameless plug period. Uh, you know, we've got high tech coming up shortly. Uh, obviously, people can can meet and greet and, and uh, understand what you're doing as, as it relates to the future innovation of each of your platforms. Uh, but if you wouldn't mind giving some closing remarks about uh, next steps and, and uh, what the future may hold for the company and the industry, that'd be great. Uh, Michael, let me start with you. Well, um, shameless plug number one is that, um, <laughs> that we will be at high tech. Booth three zero zero five. There you and, go. That's um, one of the. There you go. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> and and we will be uh, previewing um, uh, a new capability, our call center feature, which allows us to take we 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 look at chains collections and we see a, a big part of of the of what we have now is is multiple people doing a, a, and and this has been said already is what the guy who had a singular job description now has multiple so our, we're using call center to be able to handle multiple hotels do um, extensive booking and allow people to make all of the subordinate um, reservations for table space for dining reservations etc um, linking uh, a, a whole unique onboard integrated um, hospitality and PMS based reservation to be delivered with an intra company impact for those people who are and, and very high touch services that you would associate with the luxury and, and ultra luxury um, segments. Um, the mobility factor, as we've talked about already, that online uh, room service from your phone, room service from you know, um, a remote that's going to be ready at a pickup point at, a, at, a, at an appropriate time. Um, those kinds of things, we'll be showing those in the booth. Um, and, um, and we continue to look forward to being able to interact with users and prospects who have ideas and contributions that, that we want to make to the product because between our property management, our point of sale, our revenue management, and our sales and catering systems, we, we like to define those being at, at 
in all the service areas and all part of the same guest journey for um, the guests who stay in Infor managed hotels. Perfect. Fidas, you're next up. Yes, my shameless plug. Oh, exciting to, to have a discussion today. And we do look forward to having you at our booth at High Tech 3011 uh, we'll be <laughs> later this month. But we'll also be showcasing um, a single guest journey experiences. So we talked a lot about how we can improve the guest experience through automation, efficiency, improve the, the hotel's operations. So we'll be showcasing that entire life cycle. Again, Agilisys is focused on the entire guest journey, and we have products that touch every stage, from the pre-arrival stage to generating promotions. Uh, personalized, uh, personalization is going to be a big theme for us this year, understanding the market of one, and how do we promote to that market of one with relevant experiences and promotions ahead of the guest journey and prior to the guest journey leading up to their arrival. How do we you know, um, um, incentivize the guest to accept upgrade offers prior to their arrival, invite them to do a check-in and provide them with personalized upgrade recommendations during that process through our mobile check-in solutions, um, through our singular guest booking engine where you can book the entire guest experience while you're booking the hotel. You can explore what other amenities the, the hotel has to offer from spa to golf to dining and book that single guest experience with one transaction and have that flow into the property management system and our other systems so when a guest arrives, your hotel operations teams at every touch point can action that information. Leading through that, through the guest day, on checkout, how do we action feedback from the guests? How do we gather feedback from the guests and turn that into an actionable um, event, either by incentivizing guests to leave us positive word of mouth reviews, learning about their experience and incentivizing uh, or encouraging positive word of mouth reviews, or responding to any negative comments by turning a negative experience into a positive using survey modules on our digital marketing tools. So we come full circle. Um, we're showcasing all those solutions alongside our food and beverage point of sale offerings, our, our inventory management um, offerings, food and beverage inventory management offerings, and everything that touches the life cycle of a guest throughout the departments of our hotel. We're excited to be showcasing those. Wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, good. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, Jason, how about yourself? Yeah, come come check us out at High Tech. I'll be there with a large portion of my team uh, from development. We'll also have product people, salespeople at booth 4911. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you know, last year was weird, but we'll be showing off our revenue management live functionality, which updates rates every time there's any change in the system. We'll be showing off our uh, made tracking, mobile app features, guest interaction. You can get your hands on anything. We've got swag, we've got Guitar Hero. You can come play and get a free t-shirt. So <laughs> check us out, come, welcome to Texas. Um, and if you wanna grab any time with me, just let me know. Um, uh, looking forward to it. Perfect. Michael, Fidas, and Jason, thank you very, very much for an awesome session. It's been a pleasure. And uh, all the best at High Tech in uh, Dallas. Yeehaw. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Wishing you all the best. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Guys.